Hello students, so now we are talking about this topic, alkyl halides, or you can call it halogen alkanes. These are compounds with a halogen atom bonded to a carbon atom. They are omnipresent around us. You know that chloromethane is released in large amount by the ocean cap. And of course when you have forest fire and the volcanoes, remember recently in Singapore? We have a lot of air barbecue, right? Coming from our neighbors down south. <laughs> Wasn't a good smell. In this kind of halogen alkanes, also have a lot of massive industrial applications. But nowadays, we are trying to decrease the usage of it because we know that it's quite harmful to us and because of certain environmental issues. In the past, we used them as inhaled anesthetics, refrigerants, pesticides, solvents, chillers. Trichloroethylene, it was used as a solvent. Halotane, this is a common name, a kind of CFCs. It is an inhaled anesthetic. Dichloro, difluoromethane, we found in the fridge. And for bromomethane, it is a fumigant. There are other halo compounds that provide important steps in the synthesis of new drugs. Like this molecule here, called halomon, which is isolated from this red alga, Potera honomanie. It exhibits anti cancer activity against several human tumor cell lines. In fact, most of the drugs you see in the market now that combat cancer they would contain halogen. For the nomenclature to name the alkyl halide, these rules can also be applied to the haloalkenes or haloalkynes. First of all, let's find the longest chain. Again, for naming, I would encourage you to just look at the examples and come up with your own way to see why is it a certain way. These rules does not change, but I guess it's easier for you to just briefly go through the rules and go straight down to the example and then you learn faster. Now you see that this molecule has got 5 bromo 2 4 dimethyl heptane speakers. The longest chain contains 7 carbon. Longest chain. Right. The numbers you have to go with the smallest. So you come from the left, one, two, right? Two, four, five. If you come from right, one, two, three, three, four, six. So of course, two beats three. And of course, this is the answer. B comes before M. So you put five bromo, two, four, dimethyl heptane. For this molecule, you will come from the left as well because the, my lowest number, I will get a two. So it's two bromo, four, five, dimethyl heptane. B goes before M. Now for this example here, if you come from the opposite end, you notice that both we have a 2 and 5, right? So how? Now if you have a choice, you go with the alphabetical order. So we know that B comes before M. So we try to have the lower number assigned to the one that comes first. So that's why you get 2 bromo, 5 methyl hexane, and not the other way around. This can also be called methyl iodide if you want to describe the halogen form. This can be called isopropyl chloride. Do you see the first name here, the, the IOPAC name, it is 2 chloropropane. So we are using the chlorine group as an adjective to describe my longest chain alkane. But in the second case, the common name here, we are trying to use the alkyl group as an adjective to describe the noun, which is a chloride. So please refrain from using them so as not to cause any confusion. They are correct, but try to just stick to UPEC name. It's universal. And this is called bromocyclohexane. Now we know that all the halogens are pretty electronegative, so the CX bond here, where X represents your halogen, is polarized, with the carbon having a delta positive charge, slight positive charge, and the halogen carries a delta minus charge. So we know that since the CX bond is polarized, the carbon is electrophilic. That means it attracts the attention of nucleophile. It will be attacked by something that's electron rich. So going down the periodic table, the electronegativity decreases, the bond becomes less polar. But the thing is the CX bond becomes longer because the atom size becomes bigger. So the bond is longer, that means it's weaker, that means it's easier to be broken. So what are some of the ways to prepare alkyl halides? 
We start with the alkene first. We do an electrophilic addition as mentioned earlier on. You could get this kind of addition reaction. Simple. Note that we have some kind of selectivity here, which is a regional chemistry. That means right, you will go specifically to a particular position due to the stability of the intermediate form. In this case, it must be the carbocation ion. Now, for bromine and chlorine, if you are using Br2 or Cl2 in the reactants, it will undergo anti-addition because it's got to come in from the phase that's less hindered. Remember your anti-attack, antiraphacial, because we are going through the intermediate called a helonium ion, so it's bromonium, chloronium ion, intermediate to give a one, two dihalogenated products. What is this word here? Allylic bromination. Let's look at some alkene example. This is my alkene, a carbon carbon double bond. Now the next carbon adjacent to the carbon that has a double bond is called the allylic position. And this carbon here is primary because it has got one carbon attached to it, just one. This is a quaternary carbon because it's got zero hydrogen and connected to four carbon. Tertiary, secondary, primary. You should know this. This is a benzene ring, so we call this an aromatic compound. This is how we categorize the carbons here in this compound. Now the allylic radicals are stable due to resonance. That means that I can draw different structures that could represent the drawing. Movement of flow of pi electrons throughout the molecule, causing some delocalization of the electron. You spread it out, it becomes more stable because it lowers the energy of the system. Allylic bromides can be prepared from the alkenes by using this reagent here called NBS in short, and bromosuccinamide does it mean Nanyang Business School? And bromosuccinamide. You need sunlight or UV light to do the job. So here for this cyclohexene, you have got two elytic positions, which is a one, two, three, four hydrogens that are able to be substituted by the bromine. This is the structure of MBS. Recognize it. You need the solvent tetrachloromethane. In the presence of UV light, you get the bromination at the allylic position right now for the allylic bromination of an asymmetrical alkene or you can say unsymmetrical alkene it will lead to a mixture of products and we know that these products are not formed in equal amount because the intermediate can form different resonance structures so it can propel to form a different structures and then after that the br dot radical can attack so that's why I get various kinds of compounds. Now from here, let's begin with oc one in or some people call it 1-octene. You throw in MBS, CCL4, give a bit of sunlight, you see that, right? First of all, you form a carbon radical. So either I can put the radical here or there, okay? If I do it here, that means the dot is going to be on the other side. So you see that here we have electron pushing and forming resonance structure. You see, if the dot is here, then the Br dot goes in, it will form a bond at this position, then you get the 3 bromo oc one in 17%. For the other one, here, the Br dot goes in here, and then you get a terminal bromide, 1 bromo oc 2 in 83%, whopping 83%. And the reason is because here you get a cis trans isomer. You get two isomers combined together to form so-called single product, but you know they are different. 